It's here, the Football Manager 22 Beta. Beta? Beta. We'll go with Beta. The Beta is out, and that means only one thing. It's time to take over Tottenham. And it's not too late. No, we lost our purpose. Hello everyone and welcome to Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well. And if you are new around here, then welcome to the channel and to Football Manager 2022 and this beta save that we do have with Tottenham Hotspur. We are going to try and win a trophy of some description before we kick into our Builder Nation save once the full game does come out. So if you are looking forward to the save, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you're new around here make sure you also hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well so you are kept up to date when football manager 2022 content does drop on the channel also leave a comment down below too if you're new around here let me know where you're from what team you support get yourself nice and stuck into the action here on the channel but our first save as i said taking over tottenham so i've literally just booted up the game got the database all sorted out the only nation that we've got loaded here is playable is England. We've got every other nation in the base game loaded, but on view only. So there's going to be lots of players that we can try and bring in here on transfers, which is what we are going to look at in today's episode. We're going to have a look at the squad, see where it needs improvement, and also we're going to try and set up a tactic so we can see where we do need to strengthen as well. So we'll have a squad introduction and see what we can do here as we head into the season and the transfer window at Tottenham. So there is the introduction for us. We are being given. £61,000 a week, which is very nice if only that was true in my real job. And our goal, as I said, is to try and win a trophy here at Tottenham. Hopefully a few in the first season. The one that does stand out in my eyes is the UEFA Conference League. I think that's a very winnable trophy for us here at Tottenham. And hopefully in the league we can also secure some Champions League football for next season. But there is the club introduction, Tottenham have gone a wee while without winning a trophy, it is fair to say, and hopefully we can fix that in the save, albeit looking at the transfer budget we've got for this upcoming window, isn't as big as I thought it would be, I've heard about Newcastle's budget already, 200 million, we're a lot more skint it looks like, that's probably largely thanks to the new stadium that we've got here, but only 15 million that we've got to spend, so we might need to make some sales if we want to improve in all the areas that we're going to be looking at, but that's a very interesting start to the save. I thought we would have had a little bit more money than that, but we'll do what we can with that. Our media prediction is sixth. I have loaded all the logos, shirts, and I'm currently getting the faces into the game in the background as we speak. They should be sorted out fully come the next episode that you do see, but interesting start. That transfer budget, a little bit lower than we would have liked here at Tottenham and this is our recommended squad at the moment and I am actually quite happy to see that we're going to be using five at the back potentially because that is something I definitely want to try out in this FM22 beta I want to see how those wide center backs work maybe need to improve right back that's something I have thought about just by doing a little bit of research into Tottenham and also early thoughts a backup striker for Harry Kane I think that's an area that Tottenham really are lacking in but pretty happy with most of this team maybe Eric Dyer at the back is an area that we can improve upon but looking at what they've put up there we might be heading with a five at the back system here at Tottenham and we'll get an early look at those wide centre backs in Football Manager 2022. You can see the loan deals that we've got down the right hand side. Troy Parrott out on loan at MK Dons. I know in the past few years he's developed into a world class striker but is not at the club when we start off here so definitely have to try and bring someone in I think to back up Harry Kane. The club wants us to play attacking position-based football, so we'll keep that in mind when we choose our tactical style. Sign players under 22 for the future and don't sign players over 30. So we'll try and get some young players in, given the lack of time that we do have in the save. It's only going to be a couple of seasons at most long. We're probably not going to be doing too many signings under the age of 22. We'll do them where we can, but hopefully signing some good players who can improve this team who are in their prime. And looking at our objectives, for this upcoming season, as I said, qualifying for the UEFA Champions League, that will be our goal 
in the Premier League. The FA Cup reached the quarterfinal, reaching the final of the UEFA Conference League. As I said, that's a competition. Looking at Spurs this year, they probably should be winning that, I think. That is absolutely our goal to try and get the trophy in the Conference League this season. And the EFL Cup is not important, but we also have to work towards becoming self-sustainable as a club, which is going to be interesting with the financial burden that was left by the new stadium, as I have seen in some past saves when people have used Tottenham. They have a fairly hefty debt thanks to that new stadium. So that is going to be interesting to say the least. And we are into the save itself. We've actually got a game coming up against the second 11, so we might show that in today's episode as well, potentially. But what I am going to do quickly off camera, we're going to find a tactic that suits these guys, run you guys through the squad, and then we'll probably come back for that game against the second 11 before we really decide what areas we do need to improve here in this Tottenham squad. So we're back after picking a couple of tactics for this team because there's a few that I'm tossing and turning between two in particular. So first off, we tried something that we had five at the back just because we do want to try out those wide centre-back roles. And we ended up going with Tiki Taka because, of course, they do want us to play attacking football possession base. So if it's a little bit of a play around with it, it's probably not going to be exactly Tiki Taka football, to be fair, because we do have a team here at Tottenham who rank highest in stamina in the Premier League. So that is something to keep in mind. These guys can go for a fair while. So we do want to play with quite a high tempo, but we're going to try a five at the back ticky ticker to start things off. But if that does not work, then we can go to a Gagan press, a 4 3 3, very similar to what I used in last year's game, and try that as well. And it might suit the amount of midfielders we have a little bit more as well and allow us to put Eric Dyer into a DM instead of a centre back. So a few options for us there, but I think what we are going to do is try and start off with this 5-3-2 to see what these wide centre backs can do, as I am interested to see how that role would work here at Tottenham. So running through the squad quickly, a few familiar names in the first 11. In goal, Hugo Lloris, very good goalkeeper, is getting on a little bit, so he might start decreasing soon, but for what we have at the moment, he is a player that we are looking at keeping around. Good first choice option there is the French international. In terms of centre-backs, first off we have on loan Christian Romero from Atalanta. Very decent midfielder. If we put him on the wide centre-back role on support, his crossing and dribbling not great. We might actually end up putting him as a ball-playing defender instead because I didn't notice that before, but he's a good option. We might actually put him out on the left-hand side because we do want to get things going on the left-hand side a bit more with Son out there, but very solid ball playing defender, so I think we might change that around off the back of that information, but very good player and on loan from Atalanta. In the middle of our back three centre-back wise, I have chosen Eric Dyer's pace isn't quite as good as the other two, so I didn't think he'd suit being on the flanks, but we'll see what he can do as a central defender there. Coach summary wise, he's actually quite highly rated. I know in real life a player who some people are a bit iffy on, but we'll try him out as the middle rock of our back three and see how he goes there. Otherwise, when we go to the Gagan press, he can go forward a little bit and be our defensive midfielder. Then on the right-hand side of our defense, I think this is where we could really use that wide centre-back, and for us, that will be Davinson Sanchez. As on the right, I think we're going to be a little bit less aggressive than on the left with Son out there as well. I think that's an area we can really target. So if we put Davinson Sanchez out on the right. I think he could work there just getting forward a little bit more than someone like Christian Romero could. He's fairly pacey, very good strength, has a decent enough stats for this wide centre back role. We'll see how he goes. But yeah, that's how I'm thinking with that. Another decent centre back option for us there in Davinson Sanchez. Then we have the current right back here at Tottenham, Emerson Royale, a very new addition to the club, coming for 21 million from Barcelona for the wing back role that we're going to use. Looks pretty well suited, actually, so we'll give him a decent crack in the preseason. Hopefully, he can get us for at least till the mid-season transfer window. Maybe then we'll see what we need to do with right back, but he actually doesn't look too bad, does Emerson Royale. Out on the other side, we have Sergio Regulon, a player who has really stepped things up for Tottenham in real life this season. Another player who's going to be a wing back for us. Hopefully, he can get forward and bomb alongside Son on that side. Could be really dangerous for us attacking-wise. That's what we'll be hoping Anyway, very good, solid left back for us here, Sergio Regulon. Then we go to our two-man midfield in this tactic. Not too sure if it's the greatest idea now that I'm looking at it, truth be told, but we'll give it a go. I want to see what those wide centre-backs three at the back are like in this year's football manager. And we're going to be playing Pierre-Emile Hoiberg as a deep-lying playmaker on the left-hand side 
of the midfield. We'll just have him sitting back a little bit more. Someone who can potentially break things up for us on that left-hand side should someone look to counter-attack us down there if the likes of Son and Regulon are up on the counter-attack. So looks pretty well suited to that deep-line playmaker role, does Hoiberg. Alongside him on the right-hand side as a Mazala, we will have Tangai and Don Bale. You look at the stats for this Mazala role. He looks really well suited to it. So Hopefully we can get a good shift out of Indom Ballet there. And on the right wing, we do have Lucas Moura. Very good dribbler, good fitness and stamina. Hopefully he can get down that right-hand side and cause a few problems when we do get opportunities down that side. And on the left-hand side, one of the stars of this Tottenham team, Son Heung-min. Really excited to see what he can do. We're actually going to try him out as a Ramdor to have him just roaming around in behind the striker and hopefully he can build a very good partnership with Harry Kane up front, much like they have done. In real life, he is one of the guys I am looking at to get a lot of goals for us here at Tottenham. And up front, of course, who else but Harry Kane? Hopefully, we can keep hold of him. That's probably going to be one of the biggest issues in this save. But if we do, he's our out-and-out out first-choice striker, best player at the club by far. And the captain, of course, just a top-quality striker. Hopefully, we can get him firing in the save and he can bag a lot of goals for us. That's what our starting 11 looks like. For this five at the back formation, we go to the bench. We've got Galini as a backup goalkeeper on loan from Atalanta. Looks like a decent backup option too there. Does Galini, so quite happy with that. Ben Davies on the bench, good solid option for a left back. Even maybe a centre back, albeit probably one of those wide centre backs if we do use him as one of those. Harry Winks is a backup midfielder. Has had a fair bit of first team football for Tottenham over the last few years. Fairly solid stats can come in for either of our current options. Should we get injuries, we make our way down. Dali Ali is in the first team, a player who I'm not really too sure what to make of these days. A couple of seasons ago, extremely promising, one of the best players in the English game and had a ton of potential, but just hasn't quite seemed to go on with it. So it's going to be interesting to see what we can get out of Dali Ali in the save. Then we've got a fairly promising centre-back at the club here in Joe Rodan, 1.93 metres tall, so... Very tall, good jumping reach and hitting something I do quite like in our defenders. So he could be a player who does rise through the ranks here at Tottenham. Next up, we've got another midfield option for us here. Giovanni Lascelles, very solid all round. Pretty solid across all the positions in the midfield. Another good bit of midfield cover for us there in Lascelles. Next up in this Tottenham team, the young Dutch winger, Steven Bergwin, the backup to Song, can also play on the right. And that is his preferred foot. So. May end up being the backup to Lucas Moore, but a player with decent potential. Next up, our backup right back, the Irishman, Matt Doherty. Solid wing back option. Not much more you can really say about him. Good backup option there. Out on the right is the former Wolves man. And next up, one of the new additions here at Tottenham, Brian Gill has come in from Sevilla on a transfer. 421.5 million. He was a player who caused us a few issues in our Blue Hell Worldwide save late. In Football Manager 2021, very good dribbler, more or less the backup to Son out on that left-hand side. will be interesting to see what he can do when he gets an opportunity here in the first team. Coming towards the end of this first team here at Tottenham, next up, Ryan Sessegnon, promising left-back come left-winger. Only okay technically and mentally, but very good physically, okay potential, so might not get too much game time, but we'll see what he does when he does get on the team, Ryan Sessegnon. Next up, another backup centre-back for us here, Jafar Tanganga, a player who, when I have seen him play for Tottenham, has looked pretty solid in real life. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do for us when he is called upon the 22-year-old Englishman. And to round things off, one of the players who's been getting quite a bit of game time in real life this season at Spurs, and that is young Oliver Skip, more of a defensive midfielder by the look of it than a central midfielder, but has some pretty good mental attributes already at 20 years old, and no doubt has decent potential as well, could get up to four stars. So another player who could grow a bit over the save in Oliver Skip. So that's what our first team looks like. Briefly looking at things, there's actually depth in most areas. The one area, as I suspected, where we are lacking is up front. There's not really anyone who can play as a striker in behind Harry Kane. Like Maybe you could put Hyongmin Son up there, and he'd do a decent job with that 18 finishing, 17 composure, but ideally he'd stay out on that left wing, and you'd have someone as an outright backup striker. So with that 15 million transfer budget that we do have, I think that's going to be going towards a good backup striker who can cover for Harry Kane when he is unavailable or injured, because if he picks up an injury, 
that is going to be a massive problem here with this current Tottenham team. And we will try this five at the back. We'll quickly show you guys what we look like with the Gagan press tactic with the right players in there. Potentially a little bit stronger and a little bit better suited. But as I said, we'll just try things out with this five at the back and see what happens. But we are going to have a quick look at the staff meetings. I have set them to fortnightly. We won't show you guys too much of these, but we'll show you the first one as it is something that is new to Football Manager 2022 this year. So we will attend this and see what happens now. First up, Harry Kane, captain, absolutely. We'll make captain. Next up, individual training. Apparently, Dali Ali should be a penalty taker. We'll set that individual training up. No worries at all. Player trait alterations next is still in the coaching phase of this. You've got the four phases, coaching, recruitment, development, then staff, which I'm probably going to sort out off the back of this episode before we get into the next one, which I'll hopefully have out for you guys tomorrow, but we'll see what happens there as it is coming up to a long weekend here in New Zealand, but they want Serge Regulon to get forward whenever possible, and I do like the sound of that as him and Son. I want to be bombing down that left-hand side, and Brian Gill to stick to the left-hand side of the pitch when dribbling. We may as well go with that as well. Some coaching assignments to add. We'll just tick those, because why the heck not? And then a few players who need their weaker foot developed. And this is something I believe that wasn't actually in the game last year. But this time you can train the weaker foot. So we will get onto that for these free players and move forward to recruitment. So I think we will be staying off of some of the players who are in the youth system here at Tottenham. Some with decent potential. I think what we're going to do is just move on from these. In the meantime, we should look towards using the youth system for players here at Tottenham instead of using our transfer budget, which given our budget, isn't surprising that they are suggesting it to us, but we'll make note of that. Obviously, they don't want us to be bringing in too many players from other clubs here by the look of that. Players to offer professional contracts to, I think we'll sort this out in a wee while, albeit there are some quite promising players here in the youth squads by the look of it development-wise. You can see some players who do have potential to become good players for us. Oliver Skip with four-star potential. Sessegnon, three and a half. And Brian Gill, four and a half. So he's a player we definitely need to give some game time to this season, ideally in the cup competitions and early on in the Conference League. And we have some staffing suggestions, which I am going to have a look at after we get through today's episode. I think that's something I'll be doing overnight. So we'll just skip through these at the moment and we will sort this out off camera but that's what the new staff meetings in Football Manager 2022 do look like. I think it's going to be a way where you can get through all those sort of inbox item stuff that you get a little bit easier. You can set them to however regularly you want them. You can have them every week, every fortnight or every month. I've currently got them fortnightly. I think that might be a good sort of in-between balance between getting them too much and not getting them enough so we'll see how that goes but that's something that we'll be doing mostly off camera but thought we'd give you guys a quick look at those. The staff meetings in Football Manager 2022 and we are about to play the one game of today's episode just to get a little bit more familiar with this team here at Tottenham it is the first 11 versus the second 11 of course quite a few players missing on holiday still so this first 11 is a little bit thrown together a few grayed out players as well so going to be an interesting game you would have seen before there too you can see the players warming up before the game now too which does look quite cool but we'll get into the match preview Having a look at the team, you can see this first 11. Some interesting names there, it's fair to say. Hyungman Som, the captain, but missing some pretty big players. So it's a bit of a thrown together game, truth be told, as we'll get these instructions on. In truth, the second 11 is actually probably a little bit stronger overall than the first 11 for this game. But we are managing both teams, so we are going to be able to change things up where we see fit. But we're just going to see which players impress for us here. And yeah, hopefully get a bit more of an idea about what's going on here at Tottenham prior to entering the transfer market. But as I said, as we will skip the tutorial about team talks, because I'm pretty sure we know how to deal with these, as we're going to give one to both teams. Yeah, we'll see what happens in this game. We are on key highlights. The first 11, of course, in the all white, the lily white, and it is the reserves in the blue and the black. And we'll just see what happens throughout this game, I suppose, as it's an early highlight, as we will definitely skip the tutorial on the commentary as a ball headed back there to Bedford and also sort out the match speed as well because we'll just get this up a little bit it is fair to say and we have an early highlight here for the first team albeit as I said not a heap of first team players in amongst this lot and it is a pretty good team for the backups Brian Gill with a good early chance it comes off the post so he's looking 
to impress nice and early, but early doors. Still remains nil all with the second team dominating things stats wise. Up to the 18 minute mark now is a front for the second 11, albeit as I said in this game, I think they're going to be the more favoured of the teams, just looking at the teams that did come out for this game. And they are knocking the ball about quite nicely with this five at the back system. Brian Gill out on the left, trying to look threatening again. A little bit of an iffy back pass there. That is something of note in the match engine this year. The passing is going to be a little bit hairy fairy, but it is Dali Ali who gets the first goal of this Tottenham save, albeit it's only a training ground game, let's be fair. But that looked like some nice football, it's fair to say. From our second 11, so if the first 11, when they all come back, can do stuff like this, we might be looking good this season. That's a pretty nicely worked goal. Sesson Yong setting up Dali Ali, and after 19 minutes, the second 11 lead the first 11. And not many highlights in that first half in the end, both of them in favour of the second 11. They are well and truly outplaying the first 11 at the moment. We'll make no changes in this game because I'm not too sure how many players we've actually got bench-wise, and they all look like they're in decent fitness at the moment. But so far, the players in the second 11 definitely looking like the better of these two teams. Early highlight here in the second half for the rotation. Brian Gill receives the ball from Sessegnon, but then a poor pass from him, albeit then Lucas Mora just hoofs that downfield, and Eric Dyer will tidy things up. Bergwin now making his way just inside the box. Doherty in Tanganga, knocking the ball about very nicely here. The backup team, and it is Alfie Devine, a young promising midfielder here at Tottenham Hotspur, and that's a really nice goal from him. This second 11 looking very good against what is a fairly thrown together first 11 team here. It has to be said, a really nice finish there off the assist from White. And the second 11 looking very good, 2 0 up early in the second half. And shortly off the back of that second goal, it's another highlight here for the backup team. The goalkeeper coming out thought that Brian Gill. Might get to that before bed, but he didn't. And now the first 11 look to get something going. That's a really poor pass there from Winks. And it results in another Dali Ali goal. He is trying to prove a point here in this game. It is fair to say that he deserves some first team football here at Tottenham this season. And that's a really poor pass from Winks. So close to goal. And a really nice strike there from Dali Ali from well outside the box. He is having a heck of a game. And the second 11 go 3 0 up. And with 10 minutes to go in this game, we have made quite a few changes here to this first 11 just to try and wake them up. The second 11 so far looking very good, albeit I think they actually have more first team players in their team than this first 11. Do good effort there. It comes off the top of the crossfire. I think that was from Davey, and it does remain 3 0 as we enter the last 10 minutes. Youngman Song came off on a 5.9 rating, so maybe we need to rethink that Ram Deuter role that we gave him. We'll just have a play with that throughout the rest of the preseason, but Tottenham are in possession here. Davey from outside the box again going for a wonderful goal, but just over the bar again, he's staying look a little bit threatening there is Davey, but as we enter injury time, the first team a bit poor today. It has to be said they get beaten 3-0 by the reserves. You can see there some of the players you'd expect a lot more from. Really did struggle, picked up a little bit more late, largely thanks to Davey, but they really struggled the first team, the second 11. Very dangerous with Dali Ali playing up front. So maybe that's something to consider. Probably not. We think we still need to bring a striker in. That's the one area I think we're definitely going to look at. But the second 11 having a very good game, albeit, as I said, potentially a few more first 11 options in that team than there were in the first 11 for this game. But interesting stuff from that first match here in this Tottenham save. We'll tell the first team that they were a little bit shocking, it's fair to say, in the second team that they were quite good because a very nice 3-0 win. But that will do it for today's episode. A little bit of a look at the new match engine in this game. And there are a few nice touches in amongst that. Some nice goals as well from Dali Ali as he picks up a double against the first team. So, so when we come back for the next episode, we will be doing a few transfers. And hopefully by then too, we'll also be kicking off the Premier League season. If we have a look at our schedule, I will schedule a few more friendlies in between now and then. Our first game is a very tough one as well against Manchester City. I think we'll be coming back for that and hopefully would have done a few transfers by then. If you do have striking suggestions to go up front to be a backup to Harry Kane, then do let me know down in the comments as I will keep an eye on those for any suggestions for that area. Got a few ideas already, but we'll just see who comes up in the scouting centre as well but if you did enjoy today's episode the first one of taking over Tottenham here on Sean Does FM then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up 
on the video and also remember if you're new around here and enjoy the content too hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well i'm hoping to get the next episode of this out tomorrow but i'll see what i can do i don't usually record many videos over the weekends but i'm going to try my best over the beta i'm going to at least try and get one episode out over this long weekend here in new zealand and until next time i see you and we will be kicking off the premier league season against manchester city thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and i'll see you then cheers